listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. We're joined today by Aaron Edwards, the co-owner and chief sales officer of Z-Buyer, a family-owned and operated real estate marketing and investment company. Over the past 13 years, Aaron has established relationships with realtors all over the United States, working closely with them in implementing and utilizing the unique tools and strategies that Z-Buyer offers its clients. Aaron is a leader in marketing and sales at Z-Buyer and is continuously monitoring real estate trends and fine-tuning the Z-Buyer system to ensure that his clients have access to the most current online marketing information. He joins us today to discuss how Z-Buyer benefits the real estate community and how it can help agents transform their marketing presence. Now, let's welcome Aaron to the call as we join our host, Tim Harris. So, Aaron, first of all, thanks for taking the time to be my co-host today. Um, Your company has been on our website for quite a while, even though (laughs) I believe this is the first time you and I have uh, spoken actually on this radio show. I don't think you you and I have never met before, have we? I, I don't think we've ever spoken or met before. I was trying to rack my brain, too. As I know some Harris's around the country, but I don't think I've had the pleasure, sir. Yeah, well, likewise. So, I mean, your company's been on our website as a preferred vendor. A lot of agents are always skeptical, thinking that people have to buy a spot on our website to be a preferred vendor. And no, the truth is, listeners, especially coaching students, you get on our list as a preferred vendor. If we hear from an average of 20 of our coaching clients, you know, giving a product or a service really good reviews, well, guess what? Then we figure it's a good company if our clients have vetted them, and Z Buyer was right up there. So that's the reason they're on our website for lead generation companies. But let me ask you, Aaron, is it accurate to describe what you do as being a lead generation company? Yeah, Tim, it, it certainly is. Um, and I'd, I might add that we have specialized in buying and selling homes over the years as well. Uh, and that was kind of the, the launching point that eventually we trans- transformed, I should say, into a lead generation company around 2003. Uh, we just simply had too many quality leads to handle ourselves. Um, so today we're in touch with thousands of home buyers and sellers every day. And these are typically buyers and sellers looking for a quick solution. Interesting. Okay. So um, buyers and sellers, obviously, there's been a lot of people in the selling buyer lead space. You know, the big portals are essentially, that's their revenue model. I know you guys, even though the, the name implies your focus is on buyers, you guys do quite a bit on the sell side too, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, we've been doing sellers and buyers both for quite a while, but I would venture to say seller leads, uh, we've been getting those even longer than buyers. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty even amount of volume on both sides. But, but yeah, we certainly have a number of seller leads every day, too. Um, in the description, our producer read, and I really appreciated this, too, the fact that you're um, current on online marketing information. And I know in the real estate space, you know, it's kind of funny when you look at the real estate space on a whole, the, the part of the space where technology has the greatest effect is really on helping buyers purchase homes. There's not been a lot on the seller side of things, sort of these, you know, sketchy online appraisal type things that, you know, are a big controversy in real estate. But there's not a lot of emphasis or technology that's been put on the sell side, even though anyone who sold real estate, which you have that background, knows that the power in this industry is being a listing agent. Why do you think it's been that way? Why do you think that more emphasis hasn't been put on the sell side as far as producing listing leads? Well, honestly, Tim, I don't know that I would have an answer for that. Um, I mean, there's, I, I could probably come up with theories. I think it's a little easier to get buyers. I know it's certainly easier to get what we would, what we would call here at Z-Buyer valuation leads, like you mentioned. Um, and there's a lot of companies out there that will procure leads through valuation websites and then pass them off as sellers. But I think all of us probably know a little better than that, that a valuation lead is still valuable, but it may not turn into a listing for a much longer time than would a motivated home seller. Um, and that's, you know, that's sort of what we've tapped into on the seller side of things is to advertise not necessarily that we're looking to list a home, but that we allow 
solutions to sell your home fast. So that's the type of websites that sellers find us at is a sell your home fast type of marketing that we do. Right. Now, that's, so, that's something that we've actually drilled down on this radio show before. And as far as um, you're, you've brought it up, so you're not, giving away any, you're not giving away your secret recipe. But as far as uh, right. marketing in terms of the you know, sell your home type, you know, fast type ads, those really do work. And it almost seems like that's more of a leading edge type marketing pitch than a CMA type thing. Um, it's very fascinating that that for a long time was just strictly a pitch that you heard from uh, investor sorts. But I'm seeing a lot right. of these investor guys. Well, we have a lot of coaching clients. I'm sure you won't find this surprising. We have a lot of coaching clients that are, um, you know, formally focused strictly on the wholesale investing type of the business. And now they've gotten oh, a real yeah. estate license, and, and now they're trying to do both, right? I mean, that seems to be an evolution right. of, of sort of these guys that used to stand on the courthouse steps are now getting real estate licenses. What else are you seeing as far as uh, mark, uh, industry trends? Well, um, I, I would say there's one trend that the, probably the most important one that I'm – because I, I kind of like you, Tim, I talk with realtors daily all over the country. And one trend I see that makes me very happy is that it seems like in most market centers we're shifting back to a seller's market for the first time in quite a while, which brings that much more value to seller leads. Um, I, I don't know if all of your listeners are in a seller's market. I know there's – always areas and pockets of resistance, of course. But what I'm finding with the vast majority of agents I talk with all over the country, it's, yeah, it's a seller's market again, where listings are flying off the shelves, which makes this type of marketing to home sellers, I would hope anyway, that much more valuable, that much more of a commodity when you have a seller that's saying, hey, I just need a solution. I want to sell my home fast, right? So that's one of the real positive trends I'm seeing. Um, and honestly, we're starting to see more investors coming through, creating profiles at zbuyer.com and, and uh, you know, trying, to, trying their hand in our marketing again. And that's not a bad sign for realtors either. That means the market has popped back. There was a trend we saw, I think all of us probably saw in the last several years, of, like you just mentioned, wholesalers and investors having to change hats because the deals just weren't there. You could buy a home, but selling it was a different story. You may have to sit on a mortgage for 15 months, right? So the idea of flipping a house became something that was much more challenging to achieve when the, when the market bottomed out, so to speak, around the country. And we all experienced that, of course, I'm sure, right? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. You're, uh, you're in Missouri. Julie and I are originally from Ohio, though we live in Austin, Texas now. And it's right. hard to explain to agents, I'm sure you deal with this all the time, what a bifurcation there's happened in our industry, right? You have certain parts of the country, like our California folks that are listening. I mean, we, you know, we have 100,000, Aaron, listeners that will have listened to this radio show, some total, right? right. So the, the folks in California, Arizona, Florida, you know, the sand states, up the seaboard, those uh, agents are listening going, what are you talking about? There is such a shortage of inventory. It's insane. People are, you know, paying hundreds of thousands in some cases above asking price. People are standing in line at open houses. You know, we had one right. coaching client who basically had her open house shut down by police because it was creating a traffic jam in the neighborhood. I mean, and then you have like, you know, the Midwest where it's, you know, I got a report from Joe Jackson, the realtor we used back in Columbus, Ohio for our investment properties. He said back in Columbus, he said there's a seller's market happening now. The properties are projected to appreciate by double digits. Then you have other markets across the country where it's literally still feels a lot like the recession, where there's still, it's right. still a buyer's market more than a seller's market. So I'm just sort right. of curious, like for, for an agent who wants to engage with you, let's just focus for the sake of um, a couple questions on the sell side. How do you go about ascertaining what that, I mean, how, what does it cost for them to buy a lead from you? How does that work? Well, it, the, the cost is, is simple. That We have a flat monthly fee. It's, it, the, the cost is different based on a number of things. You know, if you're in Columbus, Ohio, it's going to be a different price than would Los Angeles, California. Uh, it's, it's based on mostly past and present and expected lead count. So if you've got a county with a 1,000 leads in the last two years that you'll have immediate access to and 50 to 80, maybe 100 even leads per month coming in, you know, and if we had 100 leads in a county like in Houston or Chicago, Harris County, 
Texas or Cook County, Illinois, for example, uh, you know, if there's 120 leads a month, maybe 70 of those are sellers and 50 of those are buyers or somewhere around there, right? Uh, you're going to pay a little more. The, the upper end would be like $499 a month for access to all of our past, present, and future information. I think Columbus, the top of my head, um, it's 179 a month. It's like 15 to 20, maybe 25 new leads per month. Um, now, those are so some rel- well. Let, Aaron, let me jump in here. So, relatively sure. speaking, you're good at selling your product, but you just said something I want our listeners to drill mm-hmm. down on. Uh, that's a pretty inexpensive cost per lead by comparison to what they're paying for, say, example, compared to a referral fee. I mean, that, that's a pretty sure. darn cheap cost per listing lead for the most part. I mean, you know, you Absolutely. know that, obviously. Yeah. Absolutely. We're, we're trying to be the most cost-effective marketing tool in your listeners' arsenal. That's our goal. You know, uh, is, you know like, like I often say, you know, in a market that is even four ninety nine a month, $499 a month, in most of those markets, you close one really good house, close on one good home a year, and you're going to have a nice return on investment. It's hard not to have success, right? So I'm sure your biggest gripe, um, and I didn't, I'm just assuming because you're in the lead selling business, right, is people are going to complain about the quality of the leads. That's just the nature of the business you're in. They complain about the quality of the leads. Um, when you are looking at your, and I'm not saying there's anything, I'm not casting dispersions, I'm just saying I'm sure that's feedback. What is the difference between the successful user of your service, one that is comes to mind immediately as being the prototypical perfect user, versus the people that the person that complains a lot about the quality of the lead? You know, you understand the nature of my question. Absolutely, I do, and it's a great question, Tim. Thank you. I, I'm glad that you asked that because it's important that your listeners hear, especially if they're going to go check out the website at least and create a free profile so they can view some of the leads in their area and get a feel for what we're doing in their community. Um, I would say a good, a best user of ZBuyer, number one, makes phone calls and actually penetrates the data. Too many agents, and this would be the other side of it, the agents that don't do well, sign up for a service like ours at ZBuyer for the sole purpose of checking to see if it's legitimate. Well, don't miss the big picture here. There's an opportunity for you to make money by talking with home sellers and converting them into listings and by offering your services to buyers who are looking at homes online that have been to our websites or our third party or other, you know, our strategic relationships with other uh, companies that we've developed over the last decade or more. Uh, so, you know, that, that's the number one thing is, and don't look at the leads and decide or try to determine if it's worth a phone call. Especially with, let's just take the home sellers, for example, Tim, if you've got someone that took the time to come to a Sell My House Fast website, type in their first and last name, phone number, email, property address, reason for selling, bedrooms and baths, asking price, loan amount, what they think the home is worth, which is labeled as seller's estimated value. I always say wink, wink when I mention that one, right? (laughs) Uh, I'm sure we all know that occasionally sellers are wrong about that. (laughs) But, uh, you know, if they're filling out that form, it's worth your time to reach out to them. Even if it looks like they don't have a lot of equity or they may not be in the price range you want. Some of my favorite success stories come from agent, one agent, I won't mention his name, in San Bernardino County, that called a lead that their asking price was $19,000. And sure enough, he got the listing and closed a $190,000 home. Sellers make mistakes when they fill out forms like these frequently. And some of that stuff is impossible for us to catch, right? So let's say the number one thing is penetrating the data and not just looking at it, but making phone calls and reaching out to these leads will make a huge difference. Another one, a, a secret to success with us, is to truly understand the numbers game. In my opinion, in the business, that term is thrown around a whole lot, but a lot of agents don't really get what it means. Um, You know, you could go a couple months with nothing but leads that don't work out, and then the next month have three listings out of 25 leads. You know, if you allow yourself to see quality and to think positive and play what we all call the numbers game and truly understand it, you have a lot better chance at success with ZBuyer. 
So walk me through this. First of all, I think it's important that uh, – because I, I have uh, coaching clients that aren't investors, that don't do wholesale deals, that are just normal top-producing real estate agents, and they do uh, – they've – uh, tested marketing like this in the past, and it definitely does work. What surprises everyone, Aaron, and I think it's worth drilling down on this, is that when you run an ad or the types of leads, I guess, is what you're, you know, what you're generating, those aren't just basically people selling dirt bag properties. That's what really surprises agents when they run the fast right. cash type advertising or buy That's leads right. from you. Isn't the, isn't the misconception that they're just dirt bag houses? Well, that not only that, or that everybody that comes to our website is facing foreclosure or over their right. or in, in over their eyes and, and debt or whatever. That's not the case either. But yeah, you're right. A lot of people think, oh, I don't like that kind of marketing because I don't want a bunch of junk houses. I don't want to have, you know. Remember, we're not advertising that we buy ugly houses. And even those guys that do that are getting good properties too. It's just they about are. this type of marketing. They really are. It, it's just about this type of marketing brings about a, a more highly motivated home seller, at least from my experience, than you get from the people that are scanning around Realtor.com or Zillow or, you know, just the normal people who are already looking for an agent. And that's part of what other agents who've done well with our service tap into, is that there's all kinds of properties that come in, not just junk bag houses or dirt bag houses like you mentioned, um, but, but they, they really they understand that they're going to have opportunities with all kinds of homes um, that come in, and, and high-quality properties, too. I mean, we have success stories from million-dollar listings that came to a sell-my-house-fast or fast-cash-for-homes type of website. It happens, you know? Well, yeah. see, that's, a, that's, that's the thing, too, is that what you'll get when you run this is you'll get a fair, a fair number of people that are just looky lose, wanting to know their values, kind of get a sense of what the market's at. You'll get a fair number of those, but you also get uh, – really great listing leads because of the fact that sometimes the most, well, all of our coaching clients know this, the very definition of a great listing lead is a seller that has to sell. And if someone's going to a website like this and filling out a form saying they want to sell their house really quick, it could be because of they just inherited it. It could be because they just got word they're getting relocated. It could be because over the weekend they went and contract on something um, and they want to purchase it and they went non-contingent so then they have to sell their house really quick. So some of these leads that you get as a result of um, running uh, advertising like this, or you know, in your case, buying leads from ZBuyer, those are fantastic seller leads, the kind of seller leads that agents dream about, actual motivated right. sellers, I mean, opposed to these sellers that are just kicking tires that some of these other That's lead right. sources provide. And you know, well, I'll also – go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Finish your thought, please. Well, so when they call these guys back, right, you get a lead. Walk me through the process. A lead comes in from ZBuyer. I assume you communicate with the agent numerous ways. So the lead comes in. Um, one of our, you know, one of the very tenets of what we teach agents to do is what we call furiously fast lead follow-up, right? So calling up on the lead immediately is critical. What is your script? What do you suggest agents say when they're calling back the leads they get from you? Well, we, we purposely stay away from a script because I feel like sometimes a script can stifle your own creativity. And also sometimes I feel like uh, it's, it's tough um, to, to have to, to stifle creativity and or to have a, a rigid set of things that you have to say because every seller you come across is going to be a case-by-case -case basis with their own set of concerns, their own set of issues. As a general rule, what I've learned from other top producers who've done really well and been with us for years, there's kind of the approach that the main thing is to try to become the solution. A lot of the value of our product and what we're trying to provide uh, your listeners and other agents that we've worked with throughout the years is an opportunity to become the solution for these motivated home sellers. Um, I think there's a big key to that because um, – Sellers who are looking at a sell my house fast or fast cash for home type of website, Tim, and I hope that you agree, are typically not the same people eeny, meeny, miny, moeing through Realtor.com, right? Or, or looking – so we, our goal is to get you in front of sellers, to get your foot in the door, no pun intended, but still intended, uh, to speak with sellers and become the solution before – they enter the rat race and become a lead that everybody's got their hands on and everybody knows about that has a license and is active looking for listings. So I, we don't really have a script. 
what we try to do is provide training, and we're, we're currently working on a whole training section of the website for investors and for realtors, two different sections that will include training from other gurus like yourself and mentors like yourself that do coaching, uh, and training from even your average Joe type of agent who isn't a big name but has had a lot of success about their approach and what they say to sellers. Um, so... I hope that's a good enough answer. We we don't really no, it have is, it, a is, it, it is it is it yeah. it is. But one thing I'm sure you'll agree is that the furiously fast lead follow up is really critical. They have to follow up on the lead immediately. Absolutely. Yeah, that that should be a yeah, basic. The more quickly, the better. Right. right. Absolutely. And, and and on that note, I would even I would even add in one other thing with us. You get if if you're in a big enough county and and have enough leads, you'll get a daily notification. That is just a daily notification. So after you guys, if you're listening and you're going to check this out, if you create a free profile at the website, after you've done that, download our app. We've got a brand new app. It's free on your smartphone. We'll be mobile with you. And heaven forbid, if you sign up and try to use our service and pay the monthly fee to try it out, it's just month to month, and you can cancel any time. Get the app and check regularly because if a lead comes in at 2 and you get a notification at 3 p.m., what if the, another lead comes in at 8 p.m. that night and you're not notified, it, notified about it, I should say, until 3 p.m. the following day, right? So just keep, you know, for your listeners, it's important to keep that in mind. You're always better off being aggressively checking the website multiple times per day or checking your app, Right. Right. So let's drill down a little bit more on, for example, like when they get uh, the lead that comes into the agent. So again, I like to focus on the sell side because really, to be honest with you, getting buyers, if you have a few listings, you have to beat, I, I shouldn't say it, but I'll say it anyway. You have to beat the buyers off the stick. I mean, in any market right now, right. if you have 10 right. listings or five listings, the buyers, that's the part of this whole, uh, the so buying buyer lead thing. Come to you. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, and yeah, I mean, that was the first question I asked, why there's been so much focus on generating you know, buyer leads to sell to agents. But we're, I get that. They're easier to generate. But what really has always been puzzling to me at a very core level is why agents, why nobody, no brokers, office managers, why nobody selling agents, go get a listing. If you want buyer leads, you get to take one listing uh, and you just market it even at a very amateurish level. You'll have more buyer leads than you know what to do with. So the listing side right. of the business is where the power of the industry always is. I mean, the richest of the rich agents that we've ever coached, I'm sure that you've ever come across, have always been prominently listing agents. And the buyers were something that they definitely pursued, but they knew that their core focus has to be and their core competency was around definitely being listing agents. So when they get these leads right. from you, again, focusing on the list side, sell side, um, they are uh, what? They're not just a raw lead, somebody asking for a CMA, right? So when, what is it? How, like, you know, have they gotten us some sort of online valuation? What is the lead? Uh, some of them may have. Uh, the seller leads that we procure are specifically homeowners looking to sell their homes fast. They may have done uh, an Internet search to sell their home fast or cash for my house, sell my house fast, uh, sell house now, house sold quick, you know, anything they could do is a possibility. They may have received an email to their inbox that says, sell your home fast today, click here. They click on a link, go to a landing page, sell my house fast, or a number of other type of websites just like that with that type of marketing and that type of advertisement. Then they fill out an online form, right? They're typing in their contact info, and their reason for selling, and some of the stuff we already covered. So those are the two main ways. We also do link-to-link -link advertising, which is, the best I can understand it, not being an IT guy at all, are hyperlinks at strategic places on, online, right? Hyperlinks that say, sell your home fast. They click on it, and once again, it takes them to a landing page, and they're proactively filling out a form. I would like to add, I'm sure your listeners will appreciate hearing this, that we do our best to screen out sellers who are listed with an agent. We don't think it's our job mm -hmm. to bring you listed leads. So we ask the question, are you currently listed with an agent? And they check a bo box, I should say, yes or no. Obviously, if they check the box yes, we do not post that lead to the website. We do not supply you with it, and you won't have that lead. You'll never know of its existence. But I should qualify that. <laughs> Sellers can make mistakes. You still can come across listed leads, even new ones, occasionally, not very often. 
Um, and certainly, if you're working our older leads, which we've had a lot of success stories from older leads, five months, six months, even over a year old leads. So I encourage you, if you try it out, to, to definitely follow up with those people when you have time on a rainy day. You know, it should be more valuable than expired listings. At least they came to a website proactively through legitimate marketing. But the older the lead, the better the chance they've been to other websites or may be listed by now, too. So I just wanted to qualify the, the listing thing. But, but yeah, is that a good enough answer? Or? Yeah, definitely. You're doing a great job, Aaron. Okay. No worries. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this, uh, <laughs> we get a lot of coaching clients that ask us, like, we, the, the analogy we use is spokes on the wheel, right? So every spoke right. on your old-fashioned bicycle wheel represents a source of leads. Um, so sure. we get a lot of agents that are asking us. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my questions and answer it, and then you come up with your, and then I'll hear what you you know. I'm interested in what you have to say. I have a I have I have a sneaking suspicion. I know what you'll say, but we'll see. So one of the things that um, agents are always looking for a shortcut, right? And buying leads, and I know you're in the selling lead business, Aaron, and I respect the fact that you're not trying to you know cover up. That is what you do. I am a I am a sales trainer. I teach agents how to sell, right? You sell leads. Right. I get it. Very pure, clean, honest. Midwestern type answers, right? So, <laughs> yeah. here, right? We're not trying to put a false label. Yeah. So, but here, but here's here's the thing. When do you add a lead generation spoke? In other words, a paid lead generation spoke. Agents listening to me, especially coaching students, this is definitely something you want to consider doing. But I would strongly suggest, depending on where you are in the evolution of your business, depending on where you are, literally with your cash flow. You do not, if you're, I don't know, we have a lot of, you know, I don't know, if Aaron, if you're aware of this, but we keep track of this. There's more agents that are either coming back into real estate or getting new real estate license than I've seen happen any time in almost the past 15 years. It is incredible the amount of people that are getting into the business. A lot of part-timers, things like that. So everyone, again, number one question, how do I get, how do I generate listing leads? Guys, if you're coming into this business, you've got to think with your head uh, and think with your wallet. So you want to learn skills first. Aaron mentioned FISBOs and expired, centers of influence past clients, the things that will cost you the least, that will get you the most results. Focus on those first. And then when you have some cash flow, absolutely look for your secondary spoke. But remember what Julie always said, focus. Follow one course until it's successful. Don't be one of these agents that hops around that basically goes from, say, Z buyer to some other you know, lead generation this and lead generation that. And you're saying, oh, my gosh, I'm not getting results. It's because you never did the first spoke completely. You never learned skills. You never completely learned how to present. Your listing presentation is non-existent. Your pre-listing pack is non-existent. So if you guys start going and buying leads and signing up for every you know, seller and buyer lead generation company and you're, re you're frustrated because you're not getting the results, you have to own that a little bit and realize that maybe what you did is you skipped the step where you were actually learning what to say when sellers say this, how to overcome objections, how to read personality types, how to do all those types of basic core level sales skills. So Aaron, if I were to ask you that question, when should an agent add um, paid lead generation, what would your answer be? Well, I, I don't have much choice but to agree with you, right, Tim? <laughs> That's right. It's my radio show. See, that is the right answer. <laughs> no, that I, is the right I, answer. I couldn't, I, I couldn't agree more. I would add one thing, though, that with our company, we see success stories from brand-new agents just starting out all the way to agents that have been vet veterans in the business for 30 or 40 years. So, but I, if – you're a listener to this radio show, and you're being coached by Tim. You do whatever Tim tells you. <laughs> it's that simple. And, yeah, I, I really like that analogy, the spokes. And I like what Julie said, too, about you never completed that first spoke. And I, I love the, the concept of adding more marketing tools to your arsenal as you grow in the business. I think it's a really important concept. So, yes, sir, I totally agree. <laughs> do you have exclusivity for your areas, or how does that work? We do not. We did for a while. You know, for a number of years, we used to have just one client in all of uh, Los Angeles and San Bernardino, and back when investors were hot and heavy in the business, especially, we had more of those. Um, we came to the realization that it was just – it was. It felt like highway robbery to call a lead exclusive as the internet evolved over the years. Uh, it's become so accessible and so. Well, I mean, gosh, I, I can remember not that long ago when nobody had internet in their hand every every day, everywhere they go. So 
uh, it's hard to call a lead exclusive. Uh, even that term is network specific. If someone tells you that the lead is exclusive to you, know that it's only exclusive through that network specifically. That well, I, that I, let me jump in there. Aaron, Aaron, you're making a really good point there. That's worth. I Thank hope you. our listeners are paying attention to this. So, but I'm curious though. On the sell side, was uh, like when someone goes to your website, do you ask a question or inquire whether or not they're going to similar sites and requesting similar information? Because see, here's what we know: when someone, and this is, we started hearing this from our coaching students probably three years ago, that when they were buying leads from the Zulias of the world, and they were finding that they were oftentimes, or some back then it was rare, but now it's frequently. Not only are they getting the same lead from different websites and paying for it twice, but now obviously they're finding that more agents are competing for it. And the other little anomalous thing that we've seen is the subscription rates for those companies now to buy those buyer leads. Uh, and this has been well publicized all over the net. We predicted this over a year ago. But in any event, that they rate the subscription rate price has doubled, if not tripled. And we have coaching students that were buying buyer leads uh, from Zulia, for example, you know, truly and Zillia, uh, Zillia combined, but now yeah. they're not because of the fact that the rate price has gone up, and they're also worried that the lead quality has gone down. And that, again, is because it's, there's an oversaturation of places that they can go online as consumers can uh, get uh, real estate information. Is that the same issue? Do you have an oversaturation issue in your business as well? Not at all. Not at all. We desperately, I mean, we're making a concerted effort to push toward getting more agents. Uh, you know, for so many years, we, we've always worked with realtors, but our focus for so many years was on investors at the beginning of things because we could do that with an exclusive service. Now, we've only been doing the non-exclusive service for a couple of years now, considering we've been doing lead generation since 2003. That's not a lot of time in, in the, the span of our existence as a company in lead generation as lead generation specialists. So I would say with us, there's really no worries at this moment anyway about saturation. No one's going to come to the website and have a, you know, you have a scenario where you have to add yourself to a waiting list. And that's just not, we're just not there yet. Uh, we're growing rapidly. Uh, but we, des we definitely need more agents using our service. And, you know, we're, I'll be the first to admit we're far from a household name. I'll knock on wood. As an owner of the company, our goal is to get there. But uh, we're not there yet. It's still a process. It's an uphill battle, right? But you know the funny thing about that goal of being a household name? And this is counterintuitive, but it's true. Having been a former realtor, I can tell you that this is definitely was the way I thought, too. If, as soon as you become a household name, your best users, your best subscribers aren't going to want to use you anymore because you'll be – it's like when you know, the, you know the stock market's about to blow up when the guy's shining your shoes is giving you stock tips. And so most top producing right. agents look for companies like yours because it's not widely known, because they want right. an unfair advantage in their marketplace. And I have to say, again, this is based purely off – the feedback from our students, because I have no personal experience with your company, but I very much listen to what our coaching clients tell us. They love your service. And um, the price point that you're at is very reasonable considering how many leads you're getting. I mean, that seems almost like, yeah, I wonder if uh, uh, two years from now, when we're having another, when you're on a radio show again and you're calling in from your yacht, I imagine at that point oh. the prices would be more expensive. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, well, but who knows what the future holds? I don't, I don't, see, I don't see that. But we'll, we'll see. Yeah, you just we'll, never know, I guess. <laughs> are you saying in Missouri there's no yachting community? Is that what you're suggesting? I, I mean, there's I don't know. There certainly right? is not, uh, unless you want a lot for a lake, a yacht for the lake, right? <laughs> pontoon boat, then, when you're calling it from your big it's luxury like pontoon it, right. boat. A uh, houseboat for Table Rock Lake, right. <laughs> <laughs> or just when the waters uh, rise too high in the river. So uh, we're rounding the bend on the radio show, and um, I'm curious. Anything you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, where, so listeners, and Aaron, this is what we're going to do, and Tim Ventura, our producer, has emailed you during the show. We're going to send – a replay of this radio show, obviously, to our own subscribers, but we're also going to send a replay of this radio show to um, every agent in the country, and we do that after every radio show. Um, so we're going to include listeners in the description of the show. We're going to include a link for you to click on to get more information about the service. Check it out. Experiment with it. Obviously, the price per lead is you know it's cheaper than you're going to get anywhere else. I would caution all of you because I know some of you who are in the 
you know, in the perilous position of having to learn skills and you're learning sales skills and you're picking up the phone for the first time, I want you to listen to what Aaron, and you're thinking, oh my God, this is going to be my silver bullet that's going to make it so I never have to do any direct sales. I want you to listen to what Aaron said. He said, you do have to pick up the phone. He didn't say call or email, which I love. He said, when you get a lead from us, you got to call them. So guys, if you don't know what to say or how to say it, or more importantly, if you don't know how to react when they say something to you, you're always going to be nervous. You're always going to be on pins and needles, and the leads won't be worth anything to you. So by all means, remember, sales skills are what you have to master. Otherwise, all the best lead generation sources in the world won't mean anything to you. So, Aaron, anything else you'd like to say to our listeners before we round the bend on today's show? Well, just thank you for your kind attention, guys and gals. I certainly hope that if, if nothing else, even if you're brand new in the business and not ready to make sales calls yet and need more coaching before you sign up, at least create a profile. That opens the door for future business. It's just zbuyer.com. And uh, click on the portal for professionals. Uh, be, be a realtor uh, that is open to new marketing trends and to trying new things and 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 if you give it a shot and it doesn't work no hard feelings it's month to month you can cancel any time we'd love oh i didn't ask oh so now you're definitely on, now you're definitely on my list of lo- companies to love you don't have contracts neither do we i love that right. yeah that's great yeah we want yeah. to prove oh it my gosh you. that's so fantastic I, I i should have asked you that earlier so listeners coaching okay. students you know that's one of our number one rules, that if you're thinking about doing business with a company and they have a contract, um, you need to seriously question their commitment to providing you con- consistent service, because if they knew that they were going to, why would they try to obligate you to a long-term contract? I love the fact that Aaron doesn't do that. I should have asked that question. I apologize, listeners. But no in problem. the meantime, Aaron Edwards, thank you kindly for being my co-host today. I sincerely appreciate it. My pleasure, Mr. Tim Harris. Thank you very much for having me on. Listeners, if you have any other questions about ZBuyer, obviously click on the link uh, that's going to be in the show description. Um, And also, uh, coaching students, the link will also be on the website, and you'll go right to ZBuyer, and you can find out if it's a good fit for you. I do seriously suggest you check it out. It's a great listing lead source. At least that's the feedback I've gotten from more than a couple dozen of our coaching clients. Um, And in the meantime, we'll talk with you on the radio tomorrow. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Tim. Goodbye, everyone. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.